Biden may not always recognize his own wife, but he has not forgotten how to pander to voters. That's an ingrained skill gained over 50 years. Here he is on a video conference with Muslim activists. Muslim communities are the first to feel Donald Trump's assault on black and brown communities in this country with his vile Muslim ban. Under this administration, we've seen unconscionable and an unconscionable rise in Islamic phobia. The incidents, including kids being bullied in school and hate crimes in our communities. If I have the honor of being president, I will end the Muslim ban on day one. Day one. Thank you so, so very much. And may peace be upon you. Bet you didn't know we had a Muslim ban. Oh, because we don't. But here's something really surprising. Joe Biden, after a lifetime on the left, now supports bringing religion back into schools. Watch. I wish we taught more in our schools about the Islamic faith. Ayan Hirsi Ali is a former Muslim, author of the book Heretic, Why Islam Needs a Reformation Now, and one of our all-time favorite guests. We're honored to have her tonight. And thanks so much for coming on. So how do you how do you assess it? Most people have not seen this video. I'm interested in your thoughts as someone who's deeply learned on this subject. What is what do you take from this? Well, I mean, if you go on, uh, by the way, Saka, hi, uh, nice to see you again. And nice thank you, you for having me on. Um, but um, when you go to the next sentence, the next thing that he says on the clip, which is if you see something wrong and he quotes the prophet Muhammad then use your hand uh, and if you can't use your hand use your tongue and if you can't use your tongue then use your heart what he is basically doing from that point onwards is enforcing Sharia law and it is vigilantism on steroids it's like you know we've seen if you're a Muslim you grew up within Islam, you're trying to reform it, you're just a good American Muslim, you are being confronted with a former vice president and um, I would say a candidate for um, a major political party who's basically saying let's enforce Sharia law. I have absolutely nothing against and I'm with him on let's fight discrimination we should not yes. be bullying Muslim children we shouldn't be doing any of that he's really good on that but I don't know who puts these words in his mouth and I'm alarmed so as a garden variety Protestant this went right over my head I didn't catch any of it I didn't even notice would this be obvious to people who grew up reading the Quran Yes, I, I watched that video, I mean all of it, not just where you stopped, but where I think there's this concept called commanding right and forbidding wrong. And I absolutely cannot believe that in the year 2020, Joe Biden is commanding right and forbidding wrong, meaning he is enforcing Sharia law. I understand that Joe Biden doesn't know what he's doing because, and I think most Americans don't, but he does have a campaign team. He has a team of people who will say, this is what you can say, and here's why, this is what I think is. Your former guest said she's sorry when she made a gaffe. This yes. is something I think, because we're in this cancel culture, so, and I'm absolutely against cancel culture, but this is, here's one thing where I would say Joe Biden should come out and apologize, and apologize profusely to the American people, and especially to those American Muslims who have adopted and embraced the foundational principles of America. And uh, in this video, what he has done is he's put himself uh, at least these people uh, who I think of as the Muslim Brotherhood, radical Islamists, uh, th they have him endorsing and enforcing Sharia vigilantism. I mean, think about it. You have people who are say, Muslim scholars, when they, when they start talking about enforcing Sharia law, it is, should we use, when you talk about the hand, is it the sword? Is it firearms? Is it improvised um, explosive devices. Think about the two brothers um, who went and used their mother's pressure cooker to uh, 
hurt people during the Boston Marathon bombings in 2013. That's the kind of thing. And if you don't know what you're talking about, then you shouldn't do it. But if you do, I think it would be a great trait of leadership if then Joe Biden came out and said, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I didn't realize this is what I was doing. If he did that, I'd vote for him. Do you think there's any chance that he will do that? Here we go, because you are trying to, he's trying to harvest every single kind of vote he can get. But if, yeah. he, if he's so desperate as to want the vote of the organized Muslim Brotherhood, then I think we're in big trouble, and then I don't know if he'll do it. Very quickly, how did these words get into his script? Do you have any idea who advised him to say that? I don't know who did that. I know this, this, this group of people called uh, this guy who, who put the, the video together and who lured him into saying these things. I know that they are parts of the organized Islamist groups. We call them the Muslim Brotherhood, those of us who, who are following this sort of thing. Um, but what I do know is that the people who look after him, the campaign team, were not on red alert and that they didn't stop him from saying this type of thing. Yes. And well, here we live didn't. in the age of cancel culture. They didn't. We live in the age of cancel culture. And I would say to you, it would be a great trait of leadership if Joe Biden and his campaign team came out today and said, no, we, we made a big mistake. We obviously don't understand Sharia law. We don't understand yep. the ins and outs of it. But we, this is wrong, and this is not what we're about. Ian Hersheely, thank you so much for that. Again, I missed it. But I was glad to hear it. Thank you. Thank you, Tech.